type of relationship have you developed with Errol, Mr. Nicola? I come home from work, he smiles, crawls over to me. I leave, he cries until she comes home. He, he's just like my little buddy. And what does that relationship mean to you? Can you tell the court? It means more than anything, because he's the first one I'm actually going to get to see grow up. And the thought that this could be your cousin's baby, does that eat away at you? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm happy because it'll be his first. And I'm happy for Kayla regardless, because me and her had our miscarriage. <laughs> and it really tore her apart. Your mother submitted a statement to the court. She's one of the identical twins. And Ms. McCartney sent this statement. Cordell's the dad. He's been dad since day one, and I've been grandma since day one. I'll continue to be grandma either way. So your mother's developed a significant bond with Arrow as well. Yes, Your Honor. And she believes she's a grandmother. Yes, Your Honor. And raises and treats the baby like he's her grandson. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Eddie, your mother also submitted a statement to the court. She's the other identical twin. She says, I believe my son is Arrow's father. When she took the pregnancy test, I was the first one her and Nathan showed it to. I said, okay, who's the dad? And she said it had to be Nathan because her and Cordell hadn't done anything. I even offered to pay for a DNA test when Errol was two to three months old, and she refused. It's making me crazy. It's really messed up me and my sister's relationship, and we're twins. I've missed a year of being a grandma that I can't get back if he's the dad. Your Honor, I did not deny, refuse to go get a DNA test. I wanted to from the beginning. I told her any time she said that she would give me a date and she never gave me a date. So that's why I personally came here to get the answer. Your Honor, she refused two of them. My sister told her she would do two of them and she never got back with my sister. So, Miss Endicott, you are Mr. Eddie's aunt. And Cordell's. And Cordell's aunt. Yep. Okay, so you're another sibling, but just not the twins. Right. Gotcha. I'm the little sister. You're the little sister. Yeah. What do you know about this man? I do know that she tells Nathan all the time, you're the daddy. Then she'll go back to Cordell and say, you're the daddy. I just want to done it with, and if it's Nathan, I mean, if it's Nathan, that's cool. He needs to be a daddy being alive. life. And if it's Cordell, she needs to leave Nathan alone so he can go on. something between your words. Are you feeling like Miss Wilson is engaging Mr. Eddie in an unhealthy way, not just about the baby, but keeping him kind of in her fold? I, I have the feeling that she's trying to control his life. And how do you... Why do you feel that? Can you give me a specific example? Just by the way, whenever she texts him, he does whatever she says. If he did what I said, why wasn't he at my son's birth? Because you wasn't... You told us we wasn't invited. And, Mr. Eddie, why didn't you go? Uh, I was told that she had a doctor's appointment that day, and I told her to keep me updated. Mm -hmm. And I... I had no transportation. She went under emergency C-section. Ah. Uh... And I just got a message that says he's here with pictures. Did you feel like all of a sudden you were left out? the way that the baby was born and he moved away and stuff, it made me feel like it, she just wanted him to be the dad regardless. Um, and that she just wants to be with him. And I just... I mean, that, that tore me up. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, that's why I'll, I kind of hope it just goes in his favor. That way, you know, don't make me feel as bad. Oh, because if... Oh, because you're saying if Errol's your biological son, that's gonna make you feel horrible that all of that time you missed. Right. So, Ms. Wilson, did you put Mr. Eddie or Mr. Nicola on Errol's birth certificate? Yes, put Cordell. You... 
Oh, you put Mr. Nicola on He's the birth under, yes. Was that because he was with you or because you all made a decision? Did, was it a three-way consultation? No, Your Honor. Um, he was there at the birth and... I felt like Nathan wasn't even ready if it was his own son because he didn't have a job. He didn't have a vehicle. He still lived with his parents, his aunt, somebody. Um, he'd never had his own place and... So you picking the best father. <laughs> You're not picking the biological father. You picking the best father. The... <laughs> You've been honest to this point. What if he would have had the opportunity to be there because he had transportation and he had noticed. We would have went through with a DNA. If somebody told me that I had a son and he's being born, I don't care if I had to hitchhike, I would be at the hospital the day after. So the you day, felt like I... because he didn't get there, he wasn't as committed, which only reaffirmed the reason why you decided Mr. Nicola is going to be the best father for the baby. I'm putting his name on the birth certificate. And I believed he was. I still believe he is. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, if it's determined that he's not today, Mr. Nicole is on the birth certificate. Where do we go from? If we decide that Cordell's not the father, it'll have to be changed. So, Mr. Eddie, were you aware your cousin signed the birth certificate for a baby he even says is 50-50 between you and him? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, me not getting a ride up there caused my mom, me and my mom in a big spoot, and I couldn't get anybody to take me. Can you tell Ms. Wilson how missing that moment, missing the baby being born, the baby you believe is yours, what that feels like? Uh, it just really ripped my heart out because I thought she loved me more than what and to do that, but... And again, I mean... You me... thought she loved you more... No, enough to... Not that she wouldn't have done that to me. When you say done that to me, can you explain... That she just basically pushed me aside for him to be the dad, is what I feel. Uh, but, I mean, if it comes back what else, I mean, I'll, I'll just let him be. I just got it. That's your brother, but you the big brother. Yes, Your Honor. He idolizes his big brother. His big brother had a girl. The girl was beautiful. I idolized my big brother, but the girl then pays me attention when my big brother does things she doesn't like. Now, I fall in love with my, my, my big brother's girl. And now, she's keeping my baby away from me because now... She really wants to be with my big brother, so they've taken my baby and made a family. But I still love my big brother, but I still love the girl. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Ms. Wilson, I, I need to ask you this, because I, I feel like that there were parts of these times and these moments where you latched on to him and made him feel like you loved him and there was potential for you all. You're nodding yes. There was times that I did. Yes. I, I, look, I, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> I, 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 I know this. And so, what's fascinating is that even in his testimony, he's not gonna fully give you away and he's not gonna... He's not gonna hurt his brother, because he already feels horrible enough for doing what he did. He's a very... He's a very good guy. I mean, when it comes to that, we were best friends, and that's kind of how we still are. And that's what I kind of wanted it to always be, and that's where... But that's what led up to the sex. We were like best friends, and then it led to more than that. Oh, I get... I get exactly what happened. <laughs> I really do. If Mr. Eddie is... Errol's biological father? Have you thought about that? I know you say you believe Mr. Nicola is. Would you want to be a family with him for the baby? I don't want to push something just for the baby because sometimes that's the worst case scenario. And I want him to be happy. And I've told him that multiple times. I want him to be happy. I want him to find somebody and not have drama like comes with me. Hmm. So now, what is your relationship like, Mr. Eddie and Mr. Nicola? I, I mean, I will give you this. I have seen families come up in this courtroom and act a plum fool. Yeah. 
over less drama than this. But you two have not spoken an ill word about the other. You all have both cried when you talk about the baby and one another. What is your relationship like? We was, we was real close all through school. I mean, I just want to keep it that way. I don't want no conflict with anybody. This is just eating you up, isn't it, Mr. Eddie? Yeah. I can just see, honey. <laughs> Mr. Nicola, you can't really even look at your cousin right now? No, Your Honor. You can't? No, Your Honor. What do you feel? Why can't you look? Betrayed. Betrayed. But we have been trying to get back to where we were. Just for our family, because even me and his mom had a close connection, and me and his mom don't even talk no more. This is a family divided. First cousins who could both be the father and identical twins who could both be the grandmothers. Is there anything you two cousins would like to say to one another before I go to the results? Is there anything you would like to say? I'm sorry for what I did to you. I always love you. I always love you. Miss Wilson, is there anything you would like to say? I'm sorry to everyone and their family, and I'm very sorry that I made my mistake, and I hope today clears it up some. And to anybody that's hurt today, I'm deeply sorry. If you all are ready for the results, I have them for you. Jerome. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Wilson, Nicola versus Eddie, pertaining to whether Mr. Nicola or Mr. Eddy is the father of 10-month-old Arrow Nicola. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Nicola. Made it through. How does it feel, Mr. Nicola? Great. I'm glad it's over with. Now, hopefully, me and Nathan can get our relationship back the way it was. This was a family saga unlike anything I think we've ever seen in this courtroom. And I hope this truth is the beginning of, I think, just at least an opportunity for you all to begin to repair that beautiful relationship you had. You're both such lovely young men. I'm not perfect young men, but you really showed respect in this courtroom. For yourselves, for your family, for one another, for Errol, I couldn't have asked for more. Because nobody's gonna be perfect in life, but you all are gonna be able to give him some very real advice about... <laughs> right? <laughs> People always ask me, how do you give such good advice? Cause I done lived. Mm. I messed up. I have fallen down and gotten back up. That's not how I know how to tell you all how to do it. Ms. Holman and Mr. Drumgold, throughout the testimony, it came out that there were other possible fathers. Correct. 
Can you tell me about these other possible fathers? Well, just like with Mr. Rich, <clears throat> I told him I didn't remember whether we were together around the time of September, which was around his birthday time. Um, Mr. Matthews was the same thing. The only difference with this is Mr. Rich knew about him. Mr. Rich did not know about Matthews. All right. Well, Mr. Matthews is here, and I'd like to hear from him. Jerome, will you please escort Mr. Matthews into the courtroom? You're a f calm down. <laughs> Miss, Mr. Rich, calm down. Right calm down. Just take it a deep breath. What it is, Listen, though. we you want the truth? I, that's what I'm trying to get for you, but you gotta let me get it. You want to know I'm giving you the truth, but you've got to sit through and you've got to listen. We cannot go to a better place. Uh, man, I with could have any made a list. This. Listen, <laughs> we're here now and we're gonna get through this. We can't get to the other side. We cannot get to the other side unless we go through. We're going through. Mr. Matthews, thank you for joining us. Yes, ma'am. We've heard significant testimony today as we begin to discuss the paternity of baby Alani. I'd like to understand what your relationship was with Ms. Holman. Were you... She said she was intimate with you as well during the window of time when Alani was conceived. Yes, ma'am. And you agreed to that? Yes, ma'am. She keeps lying about that. Mr. Rich, calm down. Yes, ma'am. I can see how uncomfortable this makes you. And I would like for you to take this opportunity while I hear the rest of the testimony to go and speak with Dr. Jeff. And I will never allow you to sit here and act out of your character or make yourself look bad, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right? You may be excused. Mr. Matthews, I'd like to ask you a few questions concerning the nature of your relationship with Ms. Holman. Okay. Can you tell the court, how did you meet? How long have you been in a relationship? Well, I met Mrs. Holman probably about uh, four years ago. I met her through Facebook, and we hung out, and we clicked. And then there on four, we had relations, sexual relationships, on and on. When all. did the sexual relationship start? Uh, I, I can't recall. I just know that it's a possibility that I could be the baby's father because we was on and off, you know. And so you've had an ongoing sexual relationship with Miss Holman for the past four years? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you believe you could be Alani's biological father? Yes, ma'am. And I was taking her to a couple of her um, doctor's appointments for the baby. So you went to doctor's appointments as well? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to be her biological father? I mean, if I am, I'll accept it as my own, because I, I don't think I finished it will never end. This so you also are in love with Miss Holman? To a certain extent, yeah. What? Out of him, Rich, I know her. Meaning, this ain't it. Like, us three ain't it. I also know she's not going to change. But for if, her to simply say, not, for her to still tell not, me that I'm supposed to be the only one and y'all wouldn't have three of us in here and she's still saying that, look, I, I respect her, boy, she just say, look, I, at the end of the day, I really don't know. Instead of just saying, oh, it's his. Like, you know what I mean? Let you tell it, I ain't nothing. But yet you want this baby to be mine. Okay. Now, granted, have I been with all three of these men? Yes. How do you know that it's only these three men? Because I gave them these three men their name. This is my truth. Here it is. It's ugly. Now I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Exactly. Y'all. Yeah. Exactly. What I'm saying is, it boils down Exactly. To she said, that was a good speech. No, but no, no. The bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. None of them will be here if you were sure. None of them will be here. If None of us will be here. None of us had multiple sex partners, bro. Let he who was without sin cast the first stone. How many sins you got, bro? Go ahead. We're here for yours. Go ahead. Don't. I'm, we're here for hours. We're here for yours. We're here for hours. We're here for yours. She's hours. My thing is. Go ahead. Don't Can we go with the dog? There's no Can possibility we go? That, Mr. I mean, Mr. that it couldn't be mine. Mr. That's my Drumgold. Thing. Mr. Drumgold. Yes. I think you have now 
entered that space where you're so angry because you feel like because she's saying she really believes it's your baby, it's almost as if you are unwilling to hear the true layers within her testimony. That at, at the end of the day, there is more than one possible father. No, so yeah. just stop. Okay. Stop grasping on to this thing that she believes that Alani's your baby. What she's saying is, from the dates that everybody gave me, from what I came home with with the doctor, when I do the math, it adds up that I was with Mr. Drumgold. I hear everything you're saying. I hear all of your testimony. What date, though? No. It was two different dates. So what date is she referring to? Let's find out from Ms. Holman. Which dates are you referring to? I'm referring to the end of September to the beginning to the middle of October. That's when you're saying... That's when I conceived. You conceived. That was the actual date they gave me from... Not only from the ultrasound, but from the size and estimate of the baby at my ultrasound. That's how they came up with the exact date and time. And from there, yes, I have been going bits and pieces of telling them, because let's be real, this ain't something easy. You can just come out and tell somebody. I mean, I, this is not something easy. I'm not proud of anything that I've done. But at the same time, I'm, I'm justified. Because at the end of the day, now one of them was in a relationship with me. But did you so ever stop day, to think, why is that? Who are you talking... That's the Ms. thing. Ms. How Holman, stop to think listen. Why? Ms. Holman. I'm trying to direct my questions to you. And I'm looking right at you and I'm listening. I want you to know I hear you. And I see you. And I value you. You matter. She do. Right. <sighs> we got to start changing the words you hear. We got to start changing who we surround ourselves with. We got to speak love, purpose, and grace over our lives, over ourselves. If you got to look in the mirror every morning and say, I am worth it. You have to tell yourself you have to encourage yourself. Do you understand me? It's not easy. You're not the only woman out here in the fight. Or man. Every day, we wake up and we have to remind ourselves, you worth it. I slept with this guy on Thursday. You still worth it. I slept with this guy on Friday. You still worth it. I lied to this guy on Sunday. You still worth it. I came up short over here. You're still worth it. You're still worth it. You're still worth it. You hear me? Whether Mr. Drumgold, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Rich, whether any of them are the father or they're not, you still worth it. Mm -hmm. yes. no, Time to break free. Okay? And that's why we're here. That's why we don't just have this court case. That's why we have Dr. Jeff standing by, because you just don't do this one, two, three. Are you ready for the results? Yes, I am. Let's get them. Jerome? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follow the first envelope is for Mr. Rich. In the case of Holman versus Drumgold and Rich, when it comes to two-month-old Alani Holman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Rich, is not the father. The next result is for Mr. Matthews. In the case of Holman versus Drumgold and Rich, when it comes to two-month-old Alani Holman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Matthews, you are not 
the Father. It seems like you were surprised, Mr. Matthews. I am, but you know. Somewhere deep inside you thought you were. Yes, ma'am. It's important, I'd like to say, that even though you are not the father, I do not want you to take this out on Ms. Holman, to start a negative cycle yeah. of abusive language and comments because of your disappointment. We are here today going through all of this for a purpose. Yes, ma'am. And that's so we can turn a page and help lift her up. Yes, ma'am. These results are for Mr. Drumgold. In the case of Holman versus Drumgold and Rich. When it comes to two month old Alani Holman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Drumgold, you are the father. Exactly. <laughs> Don't go there, Miss Holman. Don't go there. At the end of the day, I just wanted to know. And why do you have the tears? Is it because you feel like you've missed things in her life or you feel like That, and it shouldn't have had to come to this. Miss Holman, your back is turned and your body language is off. If you turn and shift your focus, you see that Mr. Drumgold has very real tears of hurt because he knows what he did. He knows he wasn't there. He will have to explain why he wasn't there. You might have to explain it as well, that we were in a situation right back then. But everything worked out because we got the answers. And once I knew you were my little girl, I cried tears of joy and I smiled. Right? You got to get through this ugly stuff to get to the better part. 